if we look at the standpoint only from a choreography, you know, we see already that Yip Man Wing Chun is uh, a little bit different than, for example, Yun Kei San Wing Chun or Yu Choi Wing Chun and Mai Ge Wong Wing Chun, you know, who, who have uh, a different uh, pieces, choreography, in, for example, their, uh, let's say, their second uh, part of the Sinem Tao form, right? Whereas Yip Man has the normal uh, punch, then opens up, and then does the Hun, right, and fits and redraws. Yun Kei San, uh, Mai Ge Wong, Yu Choi, right, they have a little bit extra movements, right? So they go out, for example, and then they start to do these kind of movements, you know, these kind of snake movements. And, you know, if it was just a choreography, you know, who cares? And you say, okay, Yip Man has it in his beauty, who cares? But if we go further back and we look at the cut from the 1890s and we look at the cut, you know, the 1890s cut that was preserved in the Sehok uh, Wing Chun or the Snake Crane Wing Chun in English uh, by the Law family. And if we go further back, you know, to the Kun Kut of the 1850s and from the Wing Chun that was uh, created in the 1700s, the origin of the system, if we look at that Kut, we find much more important things than just uh, choreography that is altered. We find that the whole base of the system, the internal principles and the cultivation, you know, of mind, of the body, of the force flow handling, you know, of the momentum handling, you know, the whole theory of the, of the six joint powers or seven bows, you know, that it all got watered down <coughs> in, in history. So why is the question, right? Why it got uh, modified? You know? And when exactly it got modified? You now the key point here is the Kun Kut from the Law family from the 1890s and the Kun Kut from uh, Yik Kam who yeah, was a Red Boat uh, member and who passed his uh, knowledge on to the Chou family who eventually went into Malaysia. If we look at that Kun Kut, we see that Wing Chun was a very, very internal system who placed, which placed great emphasis you know, on mind, body and, uh, and energy, you know, force flow handling, momentum handling, you know, uh, Jin, uh, Qi, uh, Yi, all these things, very deep concept that make up uh, a very complete a TCM or traditional Chinese martial arts system were all embedded in Wing Chun's DNA. And then over the course of history it just got watered down until almost nothing left. You know, and that started uh, around the time of the Taiping uprising of the Heavenly Kingdom, you know, when all the commotion was going on and they needed the rebels against the Qing, right? Needed to prepare them quickly as fighters in order to uh, get rid of the Qing, right, and restore the Ming. But of course, things got lost. I mean, they didn't have time to teach all the internals, you know. Wing Chun was a very balanced system for mind, body, energy. It was not only about fighting, but at that period of time, they needed for that specific goals to create fighters. So internal stuff was taken out. And we can see that very clearly if we study the Kun Kut from before uh, the 1850s or around the 1850s and the Kun Kut uh, of, of the late part of the 1800s, right? The 1890 that we, was preserved in the law family. So then we see it's not only about uh, choreography, you know, it's about rebuilding Wing Chun from the source and then training it, you know, and seeing what it brings in terms of extras. And I can say out of personal experience, it's mind blowing, you know, skill goes up and not only fighting skill, but skill goes up in terms of 
balance you know in terms of health in terms of many other things outside of just fighting you know Wing Chun is so much more than just fighting right I mean uh, if people are still busy with uh, how can I defend a punch and what can I do about this and this after three four years of studying Wing Chun I think something is wrong but yeah that's that's just my personal opinion so like I was saying if we look at this uh, part you know like yeah, for example the Siu Nen Tao the second part where some lineages before Yip Man have the snake element inside and the further we go back in time you know Yun Kei San uh, his teacher right Fu Bu Chun and we have uh, Cheng Bo and if we look at these people you see more we go down the line more was taken out in terms because yeah if we think practically why when we need that right and we can also put it somewhere else and yeah because they don't uh, realize anymore the importance of that set and what it was for you know if we know where that set comes from where that piece and you can see for example here on this video you know I will just uh, keep on talking but you see it now on the screen you don't see me anymore but you see the screen You see, that's where it comes from. It's identical. And if you, it's for like say 70% identical, if we take the lineage uh, up from Yun Kei San, so the Sei Hok Wing Chun, the Snake Crane Wing Chun, and it's almost 100% identical, if we go one step more up to the Yik Kam Wing Chun, right? Which was passed down to the Chou family and ended up in Malaysia. Then you see, this is pure, or May and or no May in Cantonese and if we look at that we have and we study the theory and we know oh this gives a great amount of joint handling ability which greatly enforces and gives us more power in our seven bows uh, power transmission in order to get the gene out you know so the founder of the Sinem Tao, yeah, which uh, according to my research and stuff is Miu Sun, is very, very clearly, very, very smart person who fused together the Erme 12 Swang and the White Crane from Fujian, fused them together and came up with the Sinem Tao form. And if you look at the Yik Kam, uh, Sinem Tao it's one long set and and it's part it's actually has four parts and if we see the first part it's exactly almost identical to nowadays uh, Sinem Tao you know and the closer we go up along the family tree into the past from Yip Man onwards uh, so we go to Yip Man then we go to Yun Kei San, right? And we go to the Seho Wing Chun. And the closer we go up into the past, we see the closer it resembles the Yik Kam Sinem Tao. And then we see the second part is all about the stance turning and stuff. It's, it's very 
close uh, to what nowadays Changkyu. And we see the third part very close to nowadays uh, Beauty. And we do see the fourth part where we find the seven star footwork, uh, as in Samko Bo footwork. And we see there uh, all the forms actually of the nowadays very famous Wing Chun system all fused into uh, one set. And it was only after the 1850s that the set was split, most probably according to my research and the research of Hendrik Santoy and Robert Chu by Leung Lang Kwai, who passed this system on to Wong Ba Bo. And then we have the whole lineage going uh, down from there. So basically, look at this picture. You can see very clearly. We have Leung Lang Kwai, who split the form into three sets of Sinum Tao, Cham Kyu, Piu Ji. This will happen around 1854. And then you see Leung Lang Kwai passed it on to the Law family, who kept it secret and kept it all closed door yeah, until Sifu Wayne Young uh, decided to convince his Sifu only five, six years ago and to open it up to the public. And that's here in Hong Kong. You know, the La family eventually uh, went down to Hong Kong. And then we have the other part uh, passed down from Leung Lang Kwai to Wong Ba Bo, you know, to Leung Chan and stuff. And that we know that story. And then the other part of Wing Chun, Yik Kam, who was not uh, involved in the whole splitting into three sets and passed his knowledge on to the Cho family, which went into Malaysia. So it's very, very interesting to see the lines, to trace it back. And then you can just come to one conclusion, is with this old knowledge of Erme and of Fujian White Crane, with, the old, with this knowledge, and we put it back into Wing Chun, we gain so much body, mind, and energy and very clear you know I'm not talking about here promoting uh, uh, my lineage my lineage is the best you know no I'm here asking the whole Wing Chun community to open up their eyes and come out of their boxes no matter what lineage you're doing yeah it can be Wang Q, it can be Leung Chun, can be uh, Yun Kei San, right? it can be Mai Gei Wong, it can be whatever lineage to look at Wing Chun's history, look at the original Kun Kut, take the technology from the past, put it back into your Xilintao, the knowledge, and improve your Wing Chun. Because in the end, if we go far enough back, we were all one family. And it's crucial that this knowledge is going to be put back into the system. You know? Uh, I will make other videos later on on the precise history of uh, Wing Chun and how it all came together, how it all happened. But best of all would be to read my book. I mean, it would be too much actually to tell all on a video. But I think with this video already, I proved a lot of Wing Chun's real history. And I hope that also stops uh, some of the charlatans out there that in their tracks because they cannot come up with these original Kun Kuts from the 19 uh, from the 1850s or from the 1890s you know Wing Chun was a great art like I said more than just fighting it was really uh, an art to cultivate ourselves in mind body and energy yeah hope this uh, video opened up some mind and yeah can imagine for some, it, you know, it to be like a, a big bomb exploding. But I hope it's a bomb of positive energy and not a source of another wave of useless negative energy and attacks. Yeah? Thank you for watching.